How's it going everyone? So today in this video, I'm gonna go over the algorithm problem, flip equivalent binary trees. This problem has been asked a lot at Google recently. And as you will soon see, this doesn't involve a lot of code, but you have to handle several different edge cases. And also since it is a binary tree problem, you have to be comfortable knowing how to traverse binary trees. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we are given two binary trees and each node in the tree can have at most two children and the node values are always going to be unique. For this problem, we need to determine if the trees can be identical by flipping certain subtrees. So looking at these trees, initially, you can see that they're not equivalent. But if we swap the subtrees under node one for tree number one, meaning node three becomes the left child and node two becomes the right child, after that swap, the trees are equivalent and we would return true from our function. Simple to understand, but let's look at a more complex example. In this example, we would need to perform multiple flips to have the trees be equivalent. The first difference is in level one of the trees. Node two and node three are in opposite positions for each tree. So we would need to swap those subtrees. Now level zero and level one are the same between the two trees, but level two has differences now, specifically node six. In tree number one, node six is a left child, but in tree number two, node six is a right child. So we're gonna swap the subtrees under node three. Finally, we check level three and see the nodes are not the same. If we swap the subtrees under node five, we confirm that the trees can be made equivalent and we would return true from our function again. Now that we understand exactly what the problem is asking us to do, let's go over the algorithm. Going back to the simple example, we start at node one for each tree and they are equal. So that means we need to check if the subtrees under node one are equal as well. In total, we're gonna make four recursive calls at most for every single node to determine if the subtrees are equal. So what do I mean by this? In order for subtrees to be equal, the left children and right children need to be the same. If we look at the left children, they are not the same. So this recursive call will return false. If we look at the right children, they are also not the same. So we return false there. So what we just did was we did two recursive calls and both of these calls are dependent on one another, which means we need to and them together. So we do false, anded with false, which is false, meaning the subtrees are not equal. Now we need to check if they will become equal if we flip the subtrees. So we look at the left child of tree number one and the right child of tree number two. And as you can see, those values are the same. So we're gonna return true for this recursive call. Then we look at the right child of tree number one and the left child of tree number two, and they are equal, so we return true from this recursive call. And since they are dependent on one another, we do true anded with true, which equals true, which means when we flip, the subtrees become equal. So what we just did was essentially two different checks. One, if the subtrees are equal as is, and another check if the subtrees are equal when flipping. If either of the checks are true, that means the subtrees can become equivalent. So from level one, we just do false or true, which results to true, and that will become our final result because we've exhausted looking through all the levels. Just to make sure it's well understood, the false portion comes from the two recursive calls that we did to check if the subtrees are equal as is. And then the true portion is checking if the subtrees are equal when they flip. If either of those checks are true, that means that the subtrees in both of the trees can become equal. All right, so let's implement the code for the solution. We are given two tree nodes, root one and root two, and we need to return a Boolean determining if they can become equivalent. So the first check we need to do is if root one and root two are null, because if both of them are null, that means that they are equal at the, that recursive step. So we can say 
if root 1 equals null and root 2 equals null, then we're going to return true. The next base case we need to handle is if root 1 is null and root 2 is not null, or root 2 is null and root 1 is not null. So if, if one of them is null and the other is not, then obviously they're not the same. So we can say if root 1 equals null or root 2 equals null or root 1 value is not equal to root 2's value, then we're going to return false. So we're handling essentially three different cases at this step. If root 1 is null, that means root 2 is not null and they're not the same. If root 2 is null, that means root 1 is not null and they're not the same. And then finally, if the values between these tree nodes are not the same, then we return false. All right, so now this is the actually the last part of the algorithm, but it, obviously it's the most important. We need to perform the four recursive calls. So the first two recursive calls are checking if the subtrees are equal as is. So we can say Boolean, and let's just call it, I don't know, maybe first check. It's the first check that we're doing. And we're going to call flip equiv. We're calling this recursive function. And we're going to call it on the left children. So we're going to say root 1.left and root 2.left. And then we need to and it with another recursive call. We'll say flip equiv of the right children, root 1.right and root 2.right. So as you can see, this is doing the first check, checking if the trees are equal as is, because subtrees are equal if the left children are the same and the right children are the same. And now we can do the second check now. So we can say Boolean second check, and we're going to make two more recursive calls, but this check is going to see if the subtrees can become equal after we flip. So we'll say flip equiv of root 1's left child and root 2's right child and flip equiv root 1 dot right and root 2 dot left. So we have both our first and second checks. Now all we need to do is say if first check or second check. And so if either of those checks are true, then the entire recursive call will evaluate to true, which means that the subtrees at this step can become equal. All right, so as you can see, it's a very small amount of code. Let's submit it to see if it works. And it does. Our time complexity is going to be big O of n linear time. We will only traverse the trees to the minimum number of nodes between tree one and tree two. So for example, if tree one has five nodes and tree two has 10 nodes, n would be five in this case, because we would exit early from our recursive function once determining the structures are not the same. So keep in mind, in the worst case, we may have to loop over each tree's nodes in the normal order and in the flipped order. So what this means is in the worst case, we'll hit each node two times. However, don't get this confused with quadratic time complexity. If we loop over the nodes twice, that would still be n plus n, which defaults to n. The space complexity is also big O of n linear time. It comes from the stack space that we use in our recursive algorithm. It's linear for the same reason as the time complexity. In the worst case, we have a depth of n in our tree. If you want to learn more binary tree problems, feel free to check out some of my other videos. I have a couple other medium to hard problems that I go over on this channel involving binary trees. I hope that you got some use out of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.